please welcome Amy Pendino. Good evening. I'm very happy to be here, and I'd like to thank Rebecca um, for inviting me to Morningside After Dark. Um, my first novel uh, took place in Iowa um, just after 9-11, and the sequel, which is almost done, got a couple chapters to go, um, will be a follow-up, and I have a third tentatively planned as well. So this is the beginning of my second novel. July 2003, thunder growled from the gray, sleepy west. Danny rolled over, untangled the sheet from her legs, and looked at the nightstand. Not even seven o'clock, and sunny, too. She flipped her pillow to the cold side and searched back for that last wisp of a dream that made perfect sense in the moment, but now, in her hazy state, wouldn't allow her to settle. Opening her eyes, Danny stretched her arms above her head and flattened her palms against the headboard. The thundering sound outside intensified, a hiccup of space, a breath, and the grumbling drew closer. She'd been on this farm long enough, over a year and change, to know it wasn't the right season for a truck to be hauling. She swung her legs over the bed and stood, rubbing her shoulder, then knelt by the front window to peek out. She made it in time to see the back of a stock trailer pass, the slanted morning sun making the dark holes on its silver side glint like hollow, evil grins. Its momentum swept a curtain of dust up the driveway, which the pine tree's outstretched fingers shredded into ghostly ribbons. She shivered. Not only was the truck out of season, but most drivers used the smoother, tarred roads to pr preserve both their loads and their rigs. She wondered what the trailer was carrying and why the driver chose to take her bumpy gravel road. Cody, his ears at half-mast, thumped his tail at her. Since her accident, Danny hadn't been able to work her farm. She'd done the required PT, but didn't have the strength or, to be honest, the confidence to return to her routine. She didn't have any other income either, so they slept in most mornings. You're right, bud, she scratched behind Cody's ear. Rude of them to wake us up so early. She dragged her sweatpants and a hoodie to the tiny bathroom and eased her legs one by one into her sweats as she sat. Her next thought, coffee. Waiting for the coffee minute maker to finish brewing, Danny thought about the trailer on her road. She held her hot cup by the handle and went to the front porch outside. She sat, took a tentative sip, and savored the coffee's round, peaty aroma. The first sip was always the best one, she thought, especially on a cool morning. She leaned back and watched the clouds eddy and swirl overhead through full green leaves that laced together like latticework. Her neighbor cut his hay the day before, leaving it to dry in long, lush lines on the next field. Its sweet scent mingled with the coffee's fragrance. A passel of little birds scolded the barn cat out from under the biggest pine. He darted across the lawn, leaving a trail through the dew decorating the tips of the tall grass. Danny realized she needed to mow, a bigger struggle than she wanted to admit. The property Danny rented was shielded on the western boundary by a straggle of brush trees, the land curving like a woman's silhouette, higher on the south end, tucking in toward the middle and swelling up and out at the northern edge. She'd covered almost every piece of it and thought of it as her own, and she was starting to feel more accepted in her small town, too. Danny had had a rough start back when she helped take down the old tree some of the locals said was cursed. She learned many doubted she'd last any longer than the summer. But their behavior was different now. She'd been invited to supper at Lloyd and Maryland's and a potluck at the VF. Those she passed on the road gave her the traditional two-finger salute, and they nodded to her at the feed store. Just last week, a farmer sitting to her left at the cafe told his friend he'd spotted a doe and two fawns out near Danny's place. 
no other words could have made her feel more accepted. Her cup empty, Daddy, Danny would have continued following the threads of her scattered thoughts, but her peace was broken by a horse's whinny. She knew none of the farms around hers had animals. The horse called out again. Danny shook her head, wondering, and went inside. That's it. You have to buy it for the rest. Thank you.